Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to be checking out the Ecotrek Vortex. So some of you guys are probably just here for an overview of the bike, so let's talk about some of those main specs. The Vortex comes equipped with a 350 watt rear hub motor, a 36 volt 10 amp hour battery. The Vortex also comes with seven speeds and mechanical disc brakes. The Vortex comes as a class two e-bike and has a price point just under $700. Now let's talk about the looks. The Vortex is marketed as a very budget e-bike and right around that $700 price point, we can't argue with that. The Vortex is about half the price of most of the e-bikes that we test. So calling this a budget e-bike I feel is a very fair comment. So the Vortex comes across as this somewhat sporty, somewhat nimble mountain bike. And just so you know, it is a bit smaller. We've got some of those specs down here below, but it really isn't that big. So this bike has this mostly black construction with a little bit of silver and orange in there, kind of giving it a sporty look. And honestly, from a looks perspective, it looks fun. You know, it does look sporty. I don't know if I've said sporty enough. I probably have. I probably shouldn't say sporty anymore, but it also comes with those pretty fun sport-like, oh no, I said it again. So if you take a step back and look at it, it is kind of a bare bones e-bike setup. Again, one of the trade-offs when we are only spending $700 on an e-bike, we are gonna have to give up some of those nicer things that we see on some of the more pricier bikes. Next, let's talk about who this might be for. So the Vortex is a little bit on the smaller side of things. So I'm about 5'10", 5'11", on a good day. And I felt like it was a little bit too small for me. This is probably something that would be suitable for somebody at that 5'5", five, five to maybe 5'10", range, you know, kind of on the lower end. So in my opinion, it is designed for somebody who's a little bit smaller. We've got a 20.25 inch reach here, a 27.5 inch standover height, 23 inch minimum saddle height, 31.5 inch maximum saddle height, 25 inch width at the handlebars, 44.5 inches at the wheelbase, and a 69 inch length overall. And even though we do have that 69 inch length overall, it really does feel a little bit smaller to me. I mean, I measured it, it's 69 inches, but when you're on the bike, it just tends to feel a little bit smaller in my opinion. Next, let's talk about the motor. So right off the bat, I would like to mention that the Ecotrick brand, on some of their models, they've received the UL certification on some of those models. So the UL listed seal means that the product has been tested by UL to nationally recognize safety and sustainability standards. Additionally, it's been found to be free of a reasonable foreseeable risk of fire, electric shock in a Division II environment. What's a Division II environment? I'm not sure. Anybody can put some parts together and make an e-bike, but Ecotrix kind of gone the extra mile here to get that UL certification. Just letting you know that, you know, that it's not gonna catch on fire as you're going down the road, which is uh, always a plus. So let's get back to the motor here. The Ecotrix branded rear hub motor we have here is 350 watts. Now that's a little bit less when we compare it to the 500 watts or 750 watts, which most of the bikes we test tend to be at that 750 watt range but I like 350. It seems to be a nice little scoot around wattage. And even here on the Vortex, when we were on level ground on the pavement, using just the throttle, the throttle was able to get us up to that class two speed of 20 miles per hour. And the acceleration here wasn't anything crazy, but it did feel like it was a nice ramp up getting us up to that 20 miles per hour. So as far as the motor noise goes, in my opinion, it was fairly quiet. However, that's me comparing it to those 500 watt, 750 watt motors, which is what I'm more familiar with. I think I've only been on one other 350 watt bike, and I don't really remember that one being too terribly loud as well. So I guess it sort of makes sense that if we have, you know, less watts being pulled, maybe there's going to be a little bit less noise here. So as far as comparing this with other 350 watt motors, I'm not sure if it's, you know, louder or quieter, but in my opinion, it wasn't necessarily too loud. I felt like I was able to just kind of scoot down the street, not really making too much of a ruckus. Next, let's talk about the battery. So the battery we got here is a 36 volt, 10.4 amp hours, 374 watt hours. It is a lithium ion battery, similar construction and feel to a lot of the e-bike batteries that we have seen on different bikes. 
It takes right around five hours to get a full charge on here and your estimated range based on the voltage and amp hours is anywhere between 13 to 14 miles to maybe like 22, 23 miles on the top end. So those ranges are based on a mathematical equation, not necessarily based on a real life experience or environment. However, if you are on a flat surface and you're careful with your pedal assist, I don't see why you couldn't get up to around that 20 miles per charge. The battery we have here is lockable and removable, which is nice. So if you want to park this in the garage, but you want to charge the battery in the house, you can do that. We also don't have to leave the keys in while we are riding the bike, which is super nice. Something I like to see. There are some e-bike brands where you have to leave the key in there while you're using the bike. And I guess I see the pros and cons either way. However, in my opinion, it's much nicer for me to use the keys and then put them in a secure location, like a pocket or you know a backpack, something like that. So we don't have any USB ports on this battery, but we do have an indicator up here on the top of the battery and you press that little button and it will let you know how many bars of battery you have. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The Vortex utilizes a mechanical disc brake system and normally we like to see hydraulic disc brakes on e-bikes. However, with this one only being a class two, only gonna weigh up to 20 miles per hour and it being a little bit on the lighter side of things, saving a little bit of that money to go with a mechanical disc brake, not really a huge deal, especially when you're trying to build a budget e-bike. The brake levers we have up here are these Ecotrick branded brake levers. Nothing too fancy about them, but they did the job well and I don't really have any complaints about usability on these. And those brake levers are connected down here to these 160 millimeter discs and these C-Star brake calipers. I think this is the first time I've seen these C-Star brake calipers on a bike. Maybe I've ran into one beforehand. I'm not sure about that, but they did the job well. Again, no real complaints here. We are trying to save money. This is a budget e-bike, so we're looking for things that do the job that we need them to do. So these brake calipers, they, they did that. Would it be nice to see these upgraded to Tektros? Sure. However, again, just kind of the, the mindset, like who is this for? What is the point of this bike? This bike is, the point of this bike is, you know, to ride it around and do bike things with, but it's also a budget e-bike. And so keeping that in mind, you know, no complaints as far as those goes. Next topic, Gears of War. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. It's just Gears. All right, yeah, this is the bike review, okay. So the Vortex is a seven speed bike. And up here on the right hand side, we have got this Shimano seven speed SIS index shifter on the right hand side. If you've been watching this channel long, you know I'm a big fan of these shifters because they're super easy, super cheap, and they work well. So if we are doing a budget e-bike, I'm glad that they you know went with this. Great shifter here, easy to use super easy to navigate big fan and that is connected back here to this shimano tourney derailleur love seeing the shimano name brands we've seen some of these shimano index shifters where they'll be connected to some other sort of derailleur in the back and i guess i don't understand that it's like you got the shimano up here like get the shimano in the back so i'm glad that they kept the shimano name in here now shimano tourney is the lower end of the shimano range so again budget e-bike let's go let's get shimano on there and then sliding up a little bit further, we have got these 170 millimeter pro wheel cranks. And then at the end, we've got some unbranded aluminum pedals. Now, as far as a chain guard go, we don't really have anything too serious here. This is really more of a chain stay than a chain guard. So if we were to ride really fast into rocks, and you guys know, you know what our motto is about riding fast into rocks, okay? I feel like they wouldn't really do the job that we would need them to do, I imagine, this plastic, you know, chain state going into a rock, the rock would win, you know, 10 times out of 10, the rock would win. Next, let's talk about the extras. The only thing that I would consider an extra on this bike is going to be those fenders. Now the fenders here, they are a little bit on the cheaper side. We have a thinner plastic and they also have somewhat of a clunky attachment way. Now we've seen some that are similar to this, but for some reason it just felt like they were a little bit squirrely to put on. Other than that, I wouldn't really consider anything else on this bike an extra. Next, let's talk about the essentials. So the Vortex ships with pretty much everything you need to put it together. The only things that I had to grab were a small wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. So other than that, everything else was provided. The Vortex also comes with a standard charger, a user manual, a front reflector, a rear reflector, 
and a bell. Now for the bell, I didn't install that for the review, mainly because I couldn't find really a good spot where to mount the bell. I think if I moved some stuff around and I really needed to have the bell, I think I could do that, but right out of the box, there wasn't really a perfect spot to mount it, so I just left it off. The bike also ships with a class two sticker. Next, let's talk about the suspension. Um, oh yeah, there, there isn't any. Next, let's talk about the tires. So the wheels we got here are these Kanda branded 26 inch by 1.95 inch tires. Nothing too fancy about them. There is no sidewall reflective stripe and there's also no puncture protection. The tubes here are regular Schrader valves and you can fill it up anywhere between 40 to 60 PSI. Next, let's talk about the controls. So up here on the left hand side, we have got the control pad. Now, we don't have any LCD readouts on this bike. Again, budget e-bike, we're trying to save some money here. And it is very simple. We have this on off button. So you just press it to turn it on. And then we've got four LED lights that will tell us our level of battery. And then we've also got one, two, three levels of pedal assist. Now what's interesting here is you can't turn it off from the computer. So you will just have to turn the bike off if you wanted to use it without the motor. And then once you want to use the pedal assist, you can turn the bike back on. We've also got this six kilometer button here and that is gonna let you into walk mode. Now we'll get into that a little bit later, but the walk mode here is very light, very easy, pretty much a pace anybody can keep in my opinion. And like I said, nothing too fancy about this setup. Again, budget e-bike, budget e-bike. And that pretty much covers it for the nuts and bolts of this budget e-bike. So I'm gonna send it over to myself in the past outside for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here on the Ecotrick Vortex for the ride test. Now, what's interesting with this bike, because normally we test it out without any power, is there's only three modes, low, medium, and high, so there's not actually a way to turn the power off here other than just to turn the bike off. So the bike is off. Um, they got these little LEDs in here, one, two, three, four up on this side. This is going to show us you know, how much battery we've got left, and it's going to show us our levels. They are a little bit hard to read during the daytime so we're gonna get some you know direct sunlight going on here a little bit difficult to read probably not a huge deal you'd probably know when you're in low medium or high but let's go ahead and test it out as if it didn't have a motor just test it out in uh, old school mode so let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit all right so we're in first gear here shifting up into second pretty good shift there into third Pretty good shift into third. Fourth, pretty good shift into fourth. Fifth was nice. And sixth. Ooh, sixth was good. Sixth feels pretty solid, actually. And finally, seventh. Good shift into seventh also feels pretty solid here. My favorite might be sixth, though. I'll go back to that one. So yeah, so as far as the shifting goes right out of the box, this thing works pretty well. Not really any complaints. Next, let's go ahead and turn the bike on. Just press the button here. And we'll start off in low mode. And let's hit that throttle. So pretty good acceleration here. Especially for my 350 watt motor. We'll go into medium. And it looks like we get pretty much the full level of the of the throttle here right from the beginning. So changing the level that we're in is not going to adjust the amount of power we can get from the throttle, I don't think. No, it feels like it's staying pretty consistent. So we do get the full gambit of the throttle right out front, so that's that is nice. How's it going? Yeah, cruising along. Nice, I feel like I'm getting pretty much the top speed there, which I believe is at 20 miles an hour. We got a fun little path going on over here. Looks like some future, future bike paths. Let's go ahead and uh, test out the pedal assist in low mode. And let's, uh, let's head down here and we tighten this up real quick. Let's do it, folks.
it's not a BMX park, but it is still pretty exciting. Let's see what's over here. I'm good, we're good. <laughs> it's a fun little path back here. All right, let's go ahead and put it into medium, back to our pedal assist game there. So the pedal assist does take a while to kick in. I believe they use a speed sensor here, so you have to be getting, get going up to those speeds in order to engage the pedal assist. So not super responsive. You know, maybe it's probably not designed for little places like this where we need little short bursts of, of speed. But once it does kick in, it's real nice, real gradual. Now there's not a whole lot of options we have as far as what we can do to adjust the sensitivity here. But, and like I said, it's not really designed for this sort of stuff. And honestly, I've never been back here, so we're both exploring this area together. Super fun though. All right, let's go ahead and put it into highest level pedal assist here. Tighten it down again. It's probably the longest pedal assist test we have done so far. Again, we get one, two, maybe three rotations in before we pick up enough speed to engage the motor here. Now, I sort of see that as a safety feature. You know, when you have one of those bird scooters or lime scooters, whatever it is in your area, you have to like kick a few times for the motor to kick in. And they have that set as, you know, somewhat of a safety feature. It's a little bit of a safety feature here, I guess, having just that speed sensor here. I keep forgetting we're testing pedal assist, but here we go. So it's kicking in. And it definitely easily gets up to that max 20 mile per hour speed here. The only thing, and this is just you know something that I usually notice on bikes, is that because of that delay with just the speed sensor, there's a delay between me using you know the pedal assist and then switching over to just the throttle. Man, this place is dope. Guys, I think you realize how sweet this place is. And like I mentioned, I have not been here before, so let's see what we got over here. Some jumps. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. This is dangerous for me. Let's see. Let's try something out real quick. Oh, yeah. What the heck are we about to get into right now? Guys, let's hit it. Woo! All right, guys, let's go ahead and test out the walk mode on here. Now on the Vortex, what's kind of convenient is we don't have to remember, you know, if it's up or down to turn on the light or enter walk mode. All you have to do is hold this six kilometer button right here. And there we go. And this, yeah, this is a real nice, easy pace to walk the bike at. Now, one of the things I like about this one, as soon as we let it go, the walk mode is going to turn off. So, a little bit of a safety feature there. Enter it in. All we got to do is hold it down. We're going to get a nice, easy, breezy kick from the motor here. And as soon as we want to let it go, we let off this, and we are good to go. So, walk mode on here is super simple. Uh, one of the nice things about having just this three-button setup here on this display. And last but not least, let's go ahead and do a braking test on here. Try to get up to that top speed of 20 miles per hour. Now we're in a little bit of some loose dirt here, so we'll see how this, how this works. Oh, very nice. Super duper nice. Probably about like 9, 10 feet. Going about that 20 miles per hour. Now these ones, you know, we do have those mechanical disc brakes instead of the hydraulic disc brakes, but with this bike, 
it being a little bit on the lighter side as far as e-bikes go and only being able to get up to that 20 miles per hour. I don't think that's much of a hindrance here for this bike. I mean, would I like to see hydraulic disc brakes on every bike? Sure. You know, but uh, if we're gonna save some, some money and we've got this budget e-bike kind of figured out and we gotta go with some mechanical disc brakes that work and do the job well, that's, that's no problem. All in all, the Vortex from Ecotrick really does what they set out to do, and that is create a budget-friendly e-bike. And with this sitting around $700 at the time of this recording, I feel like that really fits the ticket for budget e-bike. As we mentioned throughout, they definitely made some choices as far as like not having an LCD screen or using mechanical disc brakes. We made some decisions here to save some money and you know hopefully pass it along to the customers, which is what they were trying to do. I also want you to know that when I'm looking at this bike, I'm not comparing it to the Himalay Cruisers of this world or the KBO Breezes or anything like that. I'm just comparing it to other bikes that are in this price range. So when I see a bike that's at that price range and everything functions well and it works, I feel like that's a win for the bike. Now, if I was going to compare it to some of these, you know, $1,500, $1,800 e-bikes, it's, it's just not a comparison that makes sense in my opinion. So please take this review with that sort of mindset that I'm looking at this as a budget e-bike. How is it as a budget e-bike? Well, it's it's fine. You know, it's 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 all right. It drives around. The motor is responsive and it functions pretty well. The pedal assist, you know, needs some work. You know, it's not really very responsive, but the fact that we have that throttle there, you know, not really a horrible Thing. So yeah, there's plenty of things that they could do to upgrade it, but they're trying to provide a budget experience for people. And at the end of the day, that's that's what they did. And that is going to do it for our review of the Vortex from Ecotrick. If you want to know more, I'll have a link to Ecotrick's website down below. And if you got any questions, we've got all of the descriptions. <laughs> We've got all the descriptions. We've got all the specs down in the description below. And if you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. You know how cool this is back here? All right. Let's go ahead and hit some of these jumps.